That was a long day. Oh, hey, how you guys doing? You guys must want to see another video, huh? What are we going to talk about today? can't remember. We're going to talk about plants. We're going to talk about planted vivariums, but I'm still in my work stuff here. And it's a mess in this house. So, all right. Time to clean everything up, and here we go. Oh, I feel much better. Nice. There we go. R2D2, C3PO, ready to run. Man, it's kind of dark. Oh, let's change that. That's much better. Now we're going to be able to see everything properly. Yes. Now on today's video, we're going to go over plant selection. We're going to go over uh, your vertical vivariums, like the Abronia kids you see here. And then you can see some of my various plants that I keep here in the home. But uh, let's take a closer look over here. All right. And here is the Abronia garminia, or arboreal Mexican alligator lizard setup. And as you can see, I like when the enclosure isn't filled up with live plants, I like to um, add some fake plants to kind of fill it out in the meantime while I'm waiting for some of my live plants to grow and fill in that negative space. A lot of times when I'm working in a vertical setup, um, I, I like to work it as you would find in the jungle. So in a uh, lush rainforest or some sort of dense canopy, um, you're going to get a lot of really strong vegetative growth over the top. And I did want to kind of keep some of this middle area clear. So I got some good air ventilation, but that's more for the care of the abronia than it is for the plants. So let's stick with plants today. Um, so we got these three bromeliads and then I also have, um, you'll notice I have two air plants. And air plants, I don't know if you guys know this, will actually bloom. They have these uh, most amazing blooms. So if you want to see some pictures of blooms, I haven't had mine bloom yet. Um, but they're, they're, that one's free hanging and this one's just set inside the bromeliad top here. Well, three things that plants need uh, that you got to get it right. They need fresh air, sunlight, and water. But bromeliads tend to hold a lot of water. They boost the ambient humidity in the enclosures and um, i've actually found my abronia drink from them like little water dishes you can see that one right there they use a lot um, i do have a misting system up here that is the monsoon solo from exoterra so a little dusty here um, but this thing is great and i actually just bought some extra tubing a splitter and another nozzle and uh, for a small enclosure like this, it, it does work really well. Now, I would definitely suggest the multi-system for something as large as the Mountain Horn Dragon setup, but we'll get into that later. Um, down here, we have a couple other species of, of um, bromeliads. I don't know. They were generically titled bromeliads. I'm not sure if that's exactly what they are or not. But um, you can find a lot of tropical plants at even your local grocery store and um, they tend to be quite hardy they're not super toler or you know intolerant of temperature fluctuation um, in the back there and you'll see a, a common theme in my uh, setups is the purple wanderer back there and those are really nice climbing plants that can produce a little three-leafed pink flower um, in the summer months when we're getting a lot more light and warmer temperatures i tend to favor warmer temperatures but in a vertical setup like this i treat it very much like you would a saltwater tank so some of the larger plants like i said at the top kind of overshadowing some of the lower lighting plants but i am using this led light up top here and here is a terrestrial vivarium setup, and you'll see a lot of my purple wanderers in the back there. Spider plants, another really, really great plant that I want you guys to check out. They are a, a tropical plant. All these plants are very are tropical species, but they tend to have one thing in common, and that's all that they are extremely hardy, intolerant to um, maybe less than ideal conditions that keepers may provide for them. 
because at the same time, when you're keeping a vivarium, you're not only keeping the animals within the enclosure, but you're keeping the plants as well. You'll notice we have a um, variegated uh, spider plant, which I absolutely love the white striping. That's what variegated means. Uh, down below here, we're gonna we have some dwarf baby tears that are just blowing up. Oh, and I got a shed skin. <gasps> Arbok, you shed. Hang on, let me take care of that. Wait. All right, that looks much better. Okay, where are we? At? Oh, you want to say hi, Arbok? Hi, baby. That's my false water cobra, Arbok. You look how big he's getting. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's not really transferring well because the focal view of the camera, but he's getting big. My baby getting big, huh, sweetie? What a beauty. Can't believe you're going to get six feet, seven feet, eight feet up. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Daylight come and we want to go home. Okay, go home. All right. Now that our box back home, we can check the rest of this out. So you do see I have a layer of moss on the top here. Over here, I have some dwarf creeping figs, which is a really cool plant. And if you're doing small uh, vivariums for dart frogs, creeping, lift, uh, creeping figs work really great as a, um, as a climber for uh, foam backgrounds. And then the dwarf baby tears um, just have a really nice sense of scale and stay in in contrast to the dart frogs but anyway uh, if you're running lights for your plants uh, expect to get algae growing in the water that's fairly regular uh, no matter how often i scrape it out and wash it out take it out uh, it grows back within a couple days so that's just something you got to deal with it doesn't affect the water quality at all for the animals our box still loves sitting in there and soaking and drinking and whatever. And uh, I got some dragonstone in here. So the besides for the substrate, what I used in here was a little bit of vermiculite, some uh, coconut fiber, and some organic potting soil. Now in the very, very bottom of this layer, I do have pea gravel. And that's just for a very small drainage layer, but I don't over obsess about using like mesh and clay balls and stuff like that this is a great substrate for bioactive is it bioactive not yet kind of technically not really i don't have springtails and i don't have isopods in here but occasionally what i do like to do for the plants is i'll add night crawlers or earthworms depending upon where you're from in the u.s or wherever you're watching this from earthworms and night crawlers not only um, fertilize and add or put essential nutrients back into but they also consume a lot of the uh, bad vegetation and stuff like that in the soil additionally uh, if Arbok ever runs into one um, he's been known to take an earthworm or two every now and then and they're a great source of protein and they're rich in vitamins and nutrients so Earthworms, uh, don't count them out, especially for like Pac-Man frogs and other species. My Mount Horn dragons particularly like earthworms. Um, but they're great for moving the soil around and fertilizing the soil. Another uh, thing that, uh, a pro and a con at the same time is that uh, occasionally if you don't keep the substrate wet enough, then there's a chance that the earthworms will die. And at some point, an earth, the earthworm will die. And that provides more fertilization for the plants. But also, it's not going to smell too good. So keep that in mind when you're adding worms. If I ever add worms into this enclosure, it's always just one or two at a time at most. And after that, done. Uh, I leave it plain and I, I just water the plants heavily. I will keep the substrate uh, damp and then I give it a few days to dry out and using this is the this is the Fenix 24 7 right here this has been an amazing thing it's got a timer it actually goes through a dawn and dusk cycle so you can set this up to your time of day and then hit that 24 7 there's a max so you can change that this lighting fixture this LED lighting fixture is extremely energy efficient 
I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, it can be used with salt water also, but um, I use it for plants uh, only so far. Um, let's see, it's got a thunderstorm feature, a cloudy day, a sunny day, and a moonlight feature as well, and a bunch of other customizable options here that you can preset with these um, M1 through 4 options. And then it's dimmable as well, so you can dim it up or down. So really great fixture and you might say holy cow that's got to be like a thousand dollars no i'm joking uh it's not it's actually you can i think pick up this fixture on amazon for about a hundred dollars and i could do that in a whole other video um uh, lighting options for your vivariums budget friendly and then um you know a little bit more top tier stuff but uh in the back here is just a uh uva heat bulb for Arbok, and uh, otherwise that is it for my terrestrial um, vivarium. Oh, the, another thing that I want to mention and I want to point out that you guys should note is that um, in the foreground, I tend to use, especially in terrestrial enclosures, a lot smaller, low-growing plants. And then in the backgrounds, I use my taller, more showpiece type uh, plants that way there's this nice uh, gradual slope uh, out of the plants and it keeps the front of the variums nice and open so that's there's another layer to that so um, keep that in mind when you're planting your vivariums low growing plants in the front medium in the in the middle and then uh, tall plant your tallest plants in the background very similar to how you would plant an aquarium, actually. All right. And over here, we do have a little honorable mention. It's my small vivarium over here with my Postlotheria regalis in it. <clears throat> now, this one is lit up by LEDs around the bottom, and it's got a bunch of just different customizable light modes and things like that. And I do have a pothos in here. And pothos are extremely hardy and really great plants. They, they do all the normal things. They boost the natural humidity in the enclosure. It's uh, cleaning the air, so to speak. Some people will say that pothos clean the air. And that's, I don't know how well they're filtering out the air, but they are doing some air exchange. And... Uh, Pothos actually require much lower light levels. So here in the south facing window, I have this terrarium just set on my um, end table. And with the ambient uh, light coming in from the window, this pothos is growing and surviving. I don't know if I would call it thriving, maybe sur thriving, but, <laughs> but it's doing well and it is growing new leaves and stuff like that. Now, when you do replant, uh, move plants into new enclosures or new containers and stuff like that, um, don't be afraid. Don't freak out right away. There will more than likely be some dieback. That's natural. The plant is kind of going through some stress and a little bit of shock with the transplant. Very similar to how when we, you know, pick up our animals from the pet store and then throw them in a bag or a box or whatever they're in and then we transport them from the store to our house and it's this very weird kind of alien abduction type thing going on um, and then we all of a sudden they get thrust into your home into their new in enclosures um, you need to allow them time to settle in and adjust and plants are no different they are living creatures um, they stress out and, and just like we all do at times. So I just want you guys to keep that in mind. Even if you don't think you have a green thumb, be patient. Give it time. Love, sunlight, water, air. And, and you'll, you can be a great vivarium keeper as well. All right, and the piece de resistance. The gigantic grow tent of a vivarium. This is the colossal way to go when you want to go with a vivarium. These are awesome. And I think you guys might see a kind of running theme here. We'll explain this in a little bit. 
So, um, up top here, I got a lot of climbing branches and things of that nature. But um, when you're layering a vivarium of this magnitude, you can add some smaller vining climbing plants. Like in the back here, we have our um, pitcher plant, the Nepenthes species pitcher plant. And you can see we got a new shoot growing off of there, and that's just in a hanging pot. Um, and we're getting this started again. That wasn't getting enough humidity for a while, so the moss is actually helping out with that. Um, we have a giant mercury vapor bulb up here, heat lamp. I got a UVB bulb right there. I got a LED bulb in the back there. Lots going on in this enclosure when you have a very big enclosure like this. Um, lighting is going to be key. We got this big palm plant here. Um, and then I still fill in some of those negative spaces with the fake plants. Um, and if I drop down here, let's see if I can do it. You can see how I still have the smaller plants in the foreground and then medium plants and larger plants kind of tearing up. And that is the best way to do it. Now, um, this is a, just a butterfly enclosure. It's a nice little hack. I have two male mountain horn dragons. That's why that's in there. And uh, he was just kind of getting overshadowed by Rocky. So that's why I got him in this until I, because I'm going to set up a whole nother one of these. And I'll show you guys that video. I might be able to transplant a lot of these plants over into the new one. But, um, yeah, I guess so in a large enclosure like this, I have a pump going in there. That increases the ambient humidity for the plants um, because a lot of the light isn't strong enough to penetrate all the way through the grow tent. I did actually pick up this little grow LED. I'm not even sure if you'll be able to pick it up, but it's just red and blue lights. It's really great for um, blooming and growth for plants. Um, this is a really great budget option. It's just a screw in. I took a shop lamp and I took the uh, dome off of it and I suspended it over here to get the nice growing light to the lower level plants. And this enclosure would good, do good with a multi misting system where I would have, you know, like three or four misters spraying down this entire enclosure. Really good, you know, maybe three or four times a day to keep that ambient humidity up since these uh, lizards do come from Vietnam, southern Vietnam specifically. Um, so for this enclosure for now, I do not have a misting system. I got the uh, a vented fan. That's another thing for the air circulation. Like I said, plants need air. So I do have a circulation fan up top there. It's adjustable dimmer. And for misting right now, I just use one of the Home and Garden misting bottles. Um, you just pump the top. You could fill it. And then um, spray down the enclosure really well. I do this a minimum twice a day. Uh, in the evening is is good as well but um, my lizards a lot of my lizards actually don't even drink from water dishes um, they prefer this mist it simulates rainfall and then you'll see them sometimes they'll just dip their little heads and uh, lick the water as it runs down the leaves but uh, yeah that's vivariums in a nutshell um, when you guys get them going remember to keep your smaller plants um, in the foreground, your medium and larger plants in the background. Um, another thing you can do is some of your lower light loving plants uh, that you can get away with it. Um, you can use those in a vertical setup towards the bottom and some more of your light loving plants, bring them up and towards the top. Like the Nepenthes, they really like a lot of bright, bright light and they do well and that'll help them produce more pictures in the future so that's what I'm hoping to jumpstart that and get that into new pictures but right now it's doing the vine thing all right so that does it for today's video if you guys have any questions comments or concerns please leave them down below in the comment section if you enjoyed and liked this video please give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber make sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon
Every time I upload a new video, you might learn something new and different and interesting. And that's what I hope to give to you guys. Uh, until next time, if you guys keep it, keep it crawling.